Missionary Christianity, A Muslim's Analysis Part 3. Supplying the missing information, clarifying the vagueness, and finishing the incomplete thoughts of the missionary Christian. Non-issues. Second, there are certain non-issues that cannot be treated as though they were issues. Where the Christian and Muslim agree, there is no argument. For example, the Quran states that in spite of appearances the crucifixion of Jesus was unsuccessful, that God saved Jesus. The Christian says that Jesus died and three days later showed himself to be alive. Where the Christian exceeds his authority disagreement begins. He does not have proof that Jesus died. He has some anonymous writings, the Gospels, which say so. However, it was common belief in the first century among Christians that Jesus was not even crucified. But this was only one school of thought. Another is represented in the Bible and it has become the only Christian school of thought on the matter. The only facts that bear up well under historical examination are simply these, Jesus appeared to be crucified but was seen alive a few days later. Insisting that his death is proven is actually ludicrous. On the one hand we are told that this man healed cripples, lepers, the blind, and raised the dead. On the other hand, beating him, stabbing him and nailing him to a cross is said to be quite sufficient to kill him. While portrayals of the crucifixion today tell of a great civic event, there are Bible references that indicate otherwise. A small gathering in a garden, where his followers were forced to stand at a distance is indicated in Luke 23 verse 49 and John 19 verse 41. The Bible describes his post-crucifixion appearances as an attempt to tell his disciples that in spite of what they had seen he was alive, not a ghost. If the Christian does not try to prove the death of Jesus and the Muslim does not try to prove his own theory of how Jesus avoided death, there is nothing left to disagree upon. This is precisely the point made in the Quran at 4 157. Issues Third, let us not be led into believing that certain issues can be treated as non-issues. More than one missionary has asked Muslims, what do you gain by denying the divinity of Jesus? The questioner hopes to evade an issue by treating it as unimportant. The answer to his question was given by Jesus who said, You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, John 8 verse 32. Spelling out the precise disadvantages of belief in any particular falsehood is a worthwhile exercise, but the general principle of Jesus' words is sufficient motivation for rejection. The truth is, claiming divinity for Jesus is based on what people said about Jesus not on what Jesus himself said. Here is a place to explain the Muslim view of world religions. Islam is not a competitor among religions. The Quran states that in ancient times every nation had its messengers of God. Many peoples possess the truth, but have to varying degrees added to this knowledge with unsupported claims. So the Muslim believes that virtually any of the old religions stripped of its excessive points any thoughtful person towards Islam. Consistency Fourth, the missionary must be consistent. If he admits that Jesus' words were expanded into Trinitarian doctrine by later generations, then he is either claiming that Jesus taught his disciples more than is actually recorded in the Bible. Or he is saying that God brought us knowledge of the Trinity gradually. The first case cannot be reconciled with Jesus' words at John 18 verse 20. I spoke nothing in secret. As for the second case, if the Trinity became known only to later generations, then one must not insist that Jesus preached the doctrine. Deduction Fifth, deduction cannot increase content. Deduction is a process of seeing more clearly that which was already indicated by the evidence. We cannot deduce more than the evidence contains. This is why we say that the Trinity cannot be deduced from Scripture. The definition of the Trinity requires a vocabulary not found on the lips of Jesus. At best, the Christian can point to a verse and say that it is in agreement with his ideas, but no verse is conclusive evidence of the divinity of Jesus. The so-called fallacy of the converse is the logical mistake most often made. This means turning the arrow of implication backward, e.g. rain means wet streets but wet streets do not mean rain. Another example, the appearance of the horizon on the ocean might be cited as being in harmony with the idea of a flat, earth, but it certainly does not prove the earth to be flat. Similarly, some Bible statements might harmonize with the idea of a divine Jesus but no verse proves the claim. The nature of proof Proof is a very misused word. Proof refers to the establishment of a proposition. Proof withstands challenges and satisfies tests. But phrases such as more proof, better proof, or stronger proof are abuses of language or misunderstandings. More proof is a deceptive phrase that might lead us to believe that proof is measured and that people might have proofs of opposite things, but the winner is the one with more volume of proof. In this case proof has been confused with evidence. 
we may have another proof, but not more proof. When logicians speak of better proof, they are referring to something called elegance equality denoting clarity and simplicity. They do not refer to validity by this word. Proofs are either valid or invalid or occasionally doubted by some until a more elegant version appears. The expression stronger proof describes not the proof but its assumptions. In general, the fewer the initial assumptions, the stronger the proof. This brief explanation is intended to dispel the notion that proof depends on a man's ability to say a lot of things which sound plausible. It is content and quality, not appearance and quantity, that really matter. When the missionary produces his proof it can be shown to be unsatisfactory. He often concedes this fact but prefers the word insufficient. He then claims that God can supply the insufficiencies. This raises three important points. 1. Proof is not the sort of thing that we can simply patch over the gaps with and then call it legitimate. In fact, any valid information contained in an unsatisfactory proof is unrelated to the conclusions that one has attempted to prove. For example, the apparent motion of the planets approximately fits the theory of epicycles which is part of the theory that puts the Earth in the center of the universe. But the theory is false, which means the trajectories of the planets in no way support the idea that the Earth stands stationary at the center of the universe. 2. When the Christian claims that God will help one to believe he argues in a small circle. His claim is based on his proof and his proof is based on his claim. The dialogue is something like this. Christian, I have proof. Muslim, but there are gaps in your argument. Christian, ask God to help you believe. Muslim, why should I? Claim based on proof. Christian, because of things I have shown you. Muslim, but these things do not prove anything. Proof based on claim. 3. And finally, once again the Christian puts himself in a position where he must contradict his own behavior. When a preacher claims that he has proof for his beliefs, he should be talking about the kind of thing one man can give to another the facts and arguments for his case. Instead, he admits that his belief is not built on evidence and analysis, but rests on the faith which God gave him. If faith is a gift from God then it is not something that one man can give another man. Missionary efforts would be more honest if it was stated that the Christian only intends to describe his religion and invite converts. But much of missionary literature suggests that Christian belief is built on the kind of evidence that could win a court case. Christian faith Actually the Christian has two views of faith. Faith is said to be a gift of God, but there is another thought he expresses when confronted as in the last paragraph. Speaking from personal experience, we tell a man that his evidence will not stand a thorough examination and he hurls an accusation that we are stubborn. As mentioned already, he carelessly interprets historical accuracy in the Bible as proof that it speaks only the truth on every matter. Turning the confusion backwards, he then says that if we doubt any passage in the Bible, we must doubt every book of history. But history is not our opponent. We are opposed to a particular doctrine built on the interpretation of a very small collection of quotations of Jesus. But before we can make this point, the second view of faith occurs to him. If all things could be proven, where is the merit in believing, he asks. In other words, he does not want final proof. He feels that a pledge of loyalty, a bold leap into belief is actually the act that brings salvation. So having faith means an effort that brings reward and yet faith is a gift from God that we do not deserve. Resolving this irony is the Christian's business. Our point here is only honesty in advertising if the foundations of Christianity are loyalty to the interpretation of Scripture. It should not be advertised that Christianity stands on that which has been established in clarity i.e. proven explicitly. Application to Islam Of course one might ask if the points raised in this article cannot be applied to Islam. So in the same order as above, let us consider Islamic doctrine and the status of the Quran subjected to similar arguments. What could be identified as theology in Islam contains no contradictory mysteries for the simple reason that the Quran reveals God by revealing His attributes and His will. That is, descriptions of God and worship given to God are due to Him because of His position as God. There is no incarnation doctrine leading to the combination of godly and ungodly attributes in one individual. Islam does not ask one to believe in anything outside of reason. The resurrection of the dead, for example, is no more than today's researchers in biology have considered. Soviet scientists once reproducing an extinct species of elephant by the use of a microscopic unit of long dead gene material. A subtle point is found in the precise grammar of the Quran's description of God's power. We do not read, with God all things are possible. 
More correctly, we read instead, over all things, God is power. These things are the things He created. These things include good and evil since these words are relative descriptions. For example, the good of the vulture is good for the vulture, but evil for a man. This is the contrast in Islam between good and evil, beneficial versus harmful. All things originate with God including the rules which bring harm on the evildoer. So it is that the Quran states that God rewards, but wrong done brings harm on the doer in the settling of accounts. The Quran does not present us with mysteries of faith. Instead it is a guide. Left to ourselves we could not reproduce its contents because our research is largely trial and error. The error would prove disastrous before we accomplish the project. So while the Quran is beyond reasoning, it is not beyond reason given the guidance, we can verify its truthfulness. Origin of the Quran Several times the Quran announces itself as a sufficient sign, e.g. 29:49. Nay, the Aran that has been revealed to you consists of clear verses which are preserved within the hearts of those believers granted knowledge. Only those who wrong themselves by ascribing partners with Allah and rejecting Him, deny my verses. The idolaters said, Why have no miracles been given to Muhammad from his Lord, like those miracles given to the messengers before him? O Messenger! Say to them, Miracles are only in the control of Allah, may he be glorified, he grants them whenever he wishes. It is not in my power to bring them, I am only a clear warner to you of the punishment of Allah. al ankabut 49-50 Although the Muslims of Muhammad's time were a persecuted minority, their opposers never answered the challenge of the Quran, as it says. And if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, then produce a chapter like it. And call your witnesses or helpers besides God if you are correct. Quran 2.23 Allah challenges those who have any doubt about the Quran revealed to his servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, to produce a chapter just like it, and to call their helpers. If they are truthful about what they say. If they are unable to do so and they will never be able to do it, they should be mindful of the fire of hell, which burns with people who deserve the torment. And with the idols which they used to worship instead of Allah, punishing both the idol worshippers and what they worshipped. The fire of hell has been prepared as a punishment for the disbelievers. Al Baqarah 23-24 Preservation of the Quran The Quran promises its own preservation, 15:9. I alone revealed this Aaron to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Aaron from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. O Messenger, I sent before you messengers to prior groups of disbelievers, and they belied them. So you are not an exceptional messenger from the perspective of being made out as a liar by your people. Previous groups of disbelievers did not receive a messenger except that they belied and ridiculed him. al Hajr 9-11 it mentions itself by name about 70 times. The Arabic word Quran means recitation. Reciting the Quran is part of a Muslim's daily prayer. In addition to careful writing of copies, there has always been this double checking of its contents. Gather any small number of sincere Muslims together and it is possible to repeat the Quran from their collected memories. Some centuries ago an aberrant group claimed that there was more to the Quran than now available. Their embarrassment has been the fact that even in this century there are copies of the Quran that date from centuries before the time of this controversy. Recently a prominent missionary dishonestly challenged the authenticity of Quranic manuscripts. He claimed that twenty different people, governments or institutions claim to possess the oldest copy of the Quran. The thought he wants his audience to finish is that there are twenty versions of the Quran. The truth is. All the ancient copies agree letter for letter with today's text. Which one happens to be the oldest is irrelevant to considerations of authenticity. Words and Message The very words of the Quran are the message of the Quran. The speaker is God, not his spokesman recasting matters in his own words. Islam was not founded by Muhammad. God's message was given by prophets in every nation since at least the time of Adam. The particular religious observances of Islam and use of the term Muslim were well known in the time of Abraham. See the Quran at 22 hours 78 minutes, 2 colon 135, 3 colon 67 68, 16 colon 123. And strive in the path of Allah sincerely for His pleasure. He has selected you and made your religion a religion of kindness, in which there is no oppression and extremism. This tolerant creed is the creed of your forefather Abraham, peace be upon him. 
Allah has named you Muslims in the previous books and in the Aran, so that the messenger can be a witness against you and that he conveyed the message he was commanded to convey. And so that you yourselves can be witnesses against the previous nations and that their messengers also conveyed their messages respectively. So show gratitude to Allah upon that by performing prayer as perfectly as possible, giving zakat from your wealth, seeking refuge in Allah and relying upon Him in all your matters. For He is the best protector for those believers who seek His protection, and the best of helpers for those of them who seek His help. So seek His protection, He will protect you, and seek His help, He will help you. Al-Hajj, 78 The Jews told the Muslims that they would have to be Jews if they were to be rightly guided, and the Christians told them that they would have to be Christians if they were to be rightly guided. Tell them, O Prophet, in answer, that you follow the religion of Abraham, who turned away from other false ways of life to the way of truth. He did not worship others next to Allah, as some do. Al-Baqarah 135 You, people of the Scripture, argued without knowledge with the Prophet, peace be upon him, about your religion and about what was revealed to you. Why, then, do you dispute about Abraham and his religion, which you do not know? as it is not in your book and your prophets did not discuss it. Allah knows the reality of things and you do not know. Abraham was not a Jew or Christian in belief, but he was opposed to all false religions and obedient to Allah alone. He was also not one of those who ascribe partners to Allah contrary to the idolaters of the Arabs, who claim to follow his belief. The people who are most entitled to claim a link to Abraham are those who followed him in his time. As well as this prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who have faith in him from this nation. Allah helps and protects the believers. The scholars of the Jews and the Christians desire to mislead you, O believers, away from the truth that Allah has guided you to. Yet they only mislead themselves because their attempt to mislead the believers only increases their misguidance, and they do not know the consequence of their actions. Ali Imran, 66-69 Then we revealed to you, O Messenger, follow the creed of Abraham in terms of monotheism, freedom from the idolaters, calling towards Allah and practicing his sacred law turning away from all other religions to the religion of Islam. He was never an idolater as the idolaters claim but he was a man of pure monotheism. Reverence of the Sabbath was only made obligatory on the Jews who differed about it, so that they could free themselves on that day from their occupations for the sake of worship. This was after they had strayed from the day of Friday in which they were instructed to free themselves. Your Lord O Messenger will judge between these people who differ on the day of judgment about what they used to differ in and he will recompense each person which what they deserve. Anal 123-124 While the Prophet Muhammad is said to be a good example for us, 33-21, the same is said of Abraham, word for word, at 60-4. There has been for you an excellent example in what Allah's Messenger said, carried out and practiced, for he presented his own noble self and personally engaged in battle. So how after that can you be miserly with your souls over his soul? And only he who is hopeful of the last day, works for it and remembers Allah abundantly will follow Allah's messenger, peace be upon him. As for the one who is not hopeful of the last day and does not remember Allah abundantly, he does not follow his messenger, peace be upon him. Al-Azab, 21 O believers! You have a beautiful example to follow in Abraham, peace be upon him, and the believers who were with him, when they said to their disbelieving people, We have nothing to do with you and the idols you worship instead of Allah. We have disbelieved in the religion you are upon. Enmity and dislike has become apparent between us and you until you bring faith in Allah alone and do not ascribe anyone as partner to Him. So it is necessary for you to proclaim innocence from your disbelieving nation just like they did, except for the statement Abraham, peace be upon him, made to his father, I will definitely seek forgiveness on your behalf from Allah. Do not follow him in that because it was before Abraham lost hope in his father bringing faith. It is therefore not allowed for a believer to seek forgiveness on behalf of an idolater. Neither can you prevent any punishment of Allah coming upon yourself. O our Lord! Upon you we rely in all our affairs, to you we return in repentance, and to you is our return on the day of judgment. al Mumtahina 4 The vital point here is that Islam is not the cult following of a man. Muhammad himself was told to make all his judgments by referring to the Quran, 5.48-51. You, O Messenger, the Quran with the truth about which there is no doubt that it is from Allah. It is a confirmation and guardian for the revealed books that came before it. Whatever in those books conforms twice as the truth, and whatever does not is false. So judge between people according to what I have revealed to you in it, and do not follow their desires which they have adopted in leaving the truth that has been revealed to you about which there is.
no doubt. I have made a sacred law and clear path for every nation. If I willed to make all the laws one, I would have done so. But I made a separate law for every nation in order to test them all and to see who follows and who does not. So rush towards doing good actions and leave evil ones. Your return on the day of judgment is to me alone. I will inform you about that which you used to differ in and will repay you for the actions you did. Judge between them, O messenger, in accordance with what Allah has revealed to you. Do not follow their opinions that arise from following their desires. Be careful that they do not mislead you from some of what Allah has revealed to you. They will leave no stone unturned in an attempt to do just that. If they turn away from accepting judgment in accordance with what Allah has sent down to you, then know that Allah only intends to punish them for some of their sins in this world. In the afterlife, He will punish them for all of their sins. There are many people who do not follow Allah's laws. Do they ignore your judgment seeking the judgment of the idolaters from the period of ignorance who pass judgment according to their desires? In the sight of those who have conviction and who understand that which Allah has sent to His Prophet, there can be no one better in judgment than Allah. But not in the sight of those who are ignorant and who only follow their desires, even though they may be false. O you who believe in Allah and follow His Messenger, do not take the Jews and Christians as your allies and close friends whom you support. The Jews will only support those of their religion, and the Christians will do the same. Both groups will unite against you. Whoever from you takes them as friends is one of them. Allah does not guide those who do wrong by supporting the disbelievers. Almida 48-51 The Prophet was also told to ask for forgiveness, especially when he knew his death was approaching, for it is God alone that must be called on and asked for forgiveness, chapter 110 and 40-12. O Messenger! When the help of Allah arrives for your religion, he honors it, and Mecca is liberated. And you see the people entering into Islam in delegations upon delegations. Then know that is a sign of the nearing of the end of your duty you were sent to fulfill. So glorify your Lord together with praising Him, to show gratitude to Him for the favors of help and victory, and seek His forgiveness, because indeed, He is the forgiving. Who accepts the repentance of His servants and forgives them? In Nasser 1-3 that punishment which you are punished with is because when Allah was called upon and no partner was associated with him, you disbelieved in him and made partners for him. And when partners were worshipped alongside Allah, you believed. So the judgment is with Allah alone, high with his essence, decree, and domination, the great. Allah is the one who shows you signs in the horizons and your own selves, to prove to you his power and his oneness. And he sends down for you rainwater from the skies so it becomes a cause for the provision you are given, such as plants, crops, and so forth. And nobody takes lessons from the signs of Allah except one who turns to him, sincerely repenting. al gafar 12-13 The Prophet himself was corrected by admonitions in the Quran, e.g. chapter 80, 